So you go through the 70s. You said you started in basically 72, but around 78, when that year comes around, there's a rumor that the WWWF is, is, is looking, and Vince McMahon Sr. is looking to Eddie Graham and saying, I want to build my next All-American boy, my next champion. I'm going to go past Bruno. We're going to go to superstar Billy Graham, and then we're going to go to the next guy. <laughs> The rumor was it was going to be Bob Backlund, who it ended up being for five years, or it was going to be right. Steve Kern. Is that mm-hmm. actually true? Were you actually going to be the WWF World Heavyweight Champion instead of Bob Backlund? Yes, that's true. <laughs> but the stories that are surround it are always a little bit different. Right. And I don't know if we'll ever really know the true story. And here's the reason why is because promoters talking between themselves, Eddie Graham, Vince Sr., back and forth, trying to switch out talent, who's who's would be the for, perfect fit, and then being selfish too. Okay, should I give up my top guy to make this guy over here more money that I don't get a part of? Or should I give him somebody else and keep my top guy? And so, you know, Kevin Sullivan is a real close friend of mine, and we talk quite a bit. And he was, he was around at the same time, and he told me one side of the story. But then Dusty told me another side of the story. And then, of course, Eddie's dead, and Dusty's passed. And so I never really got the true, true story, or, or maybe I did, but it's mixed up with about four or five different stories. So when, when the story's told, it's kind of a mystery. Bobby, they sent Bobby down here from Minneapolis, and I was doing really well. But the only reason I was doing well is because that I was working against great workers, Bob Brook, Bob Orton Jr. I mean, you know, the list was unbelievable. More talent came through Florida because it was a paradise. Don Morocco. I mean, they just kept feeding us really good guys. But when you're working with those kind of guys, you just get better and better. And when Bobby came, he was a really nice guy. He had a great, great credentials as a shooter and amateur background, but he was very mechanical. He was like, I don't know how to say it. It's not an insult, but he had no fluid motion. He was locked out. He was, he was like a robot kind of. And they put him with me as a tag team partner, hoping that maybe he, some of me would rub off on him. And it's not saying that I was so great that he needed to rub off on me. It was just that I was different. And hopefully when you're in a tag situation, that's when you learn a lot of, a lot of things. Because if your partner is just a little different than you, you're going to pick up some of his traits just by watching him standing on that corner. And so they were trying to loosen Bobby up. Now, I don't know if that was a prerequisite for him to go on to the WWWWF or whatever it was. <laughs> but, the, the, you know, I was a part of taking a world title belt and dropping it in Japan that Vince Sr. sent me um, to Fujinami. And when I spoke to Vince Sr., he actually said to me, well, if you do me this favor, I, I had planned on bringing you up here and really doing a lot with you. Now, that that could have meant anything. It could have meant, you know, just giving me good matches or payoffs or whatever. But I always and I always thought it was meant that that was what the position he wanted me to come up and do when I came back from Japan. But when I came back from Japan, I really didn't want to go to New York. And this is the reason why. It wasn't that I didn't want the opportunity um, to be their world champion, it was I was afraid of the cities. I was afraid of large cities and trying to find my way around and trying to, you know, get a lifestyle and live it. And I mean, you know, Boston and Philly and, you know, Detroit and, and New York and all of those cities to me were so overwhelming. I had the opportunity. I went and worked the gardens a couple of times with Dusty. They flew us up there. And I was, I was scared to death. I was scared to death. I couldn't imagine being in a car and going, well, who am I going to ask? How do you get to Madison Square Gardens? I mean, you know, pull over. There's no 7-Elevens. And so I, when, when Eddie told me, he says, hey, listen, you know, kid, they changed their mind. You're going to stay here with us. And we're going to, you know, we're going to put the moon on you. Well, 
they did. I mean, him and Dusty, Dusty was the booker, Eddie was the owner, and they all of a sudden, one day I'm the Florida heavyweight champion, I'm the brass knuck champion, I'm the television champion, and I'm one half of the United States tag team champions. So they hung belts all over me and gave me great opportunities, and I was happy. 